Hi guys, we are ready to get started on our still life drawing. Last time we drew the grid on both the photograph that measures eight by 10, and we drew the grid on our drawing paper that measures nine by 11. So the paper is overall one inch bigger than the photograph, and that's okay. Uh, we've drawn a grid based on the rule of thirds on both, and not only is a rule of thirds good for capturing your focal points through the intersecting points, so we made sure we had our focal point objects going through the intersecting points of the grid here, here, and here, uh, but we're also gonna use those same points to figure out the placement of our objects on our actual drawing. So when you first get started with your drawing, it's really, really important to remember not to start with the details first. The first thing you want to start with is the large masses. For example, if I was drawing this artichoke over here, I would definitely not draw all the little sections on it. I would start by drawing just the overall outside contour, the overall shape. Same thing with the rest of the objects. So no details, just the shape of the objects. So to start out, I'm going to put some marks on my paper. I'm going to start out drawing this apple here at the bottom. It goes through my grid a little bit at the top here, and it doesn't quite go through the intersecting point, but right above it, and it comes into this section and that section. So I know the overall placement of that apple on my paper should be on the same spot through here. So if my apple is in that spot here on the picture, on the drawing, it needs to be on the same spot. So instead of pressing really hard and drawing really dark, I'm gonna draw with a 2H pencil on the screen it has to be darker so you guys can see it, but on your paper, it needs to be much lighter. I know I say that all the time in all the different videos, but it's true. You guys need to learn how to draw light, especially when you're drawing still life and you're bound to make mistakes and you're going to have to erase. You don't want to be stuck with your mistakes. So I'm going to draw some lines to kind of just give me an idea of where the object is going to go on my paper. Um, so I'm just drawing some intersecting points on the grid. I'm not drawing the full, the full shape yet. I'm kind of just drawing out the space that this apple occupies, looking at the grid, for example, exactly where that apple crosses. So it's gonna be around here and it comes out to about there. So I'm just kind of drawing the base points of like where my apple is situated on the paper. So now that I've drawn my points, I can go ahead and start connecting those and I can start drawing the actual shape of that, that apple. Remember, you're not drawing any kind of detail until the very end. And it doesn't mean that just because you have a mark somewhere that has to be the exact spot. If your marks are a little bit off, like I think this one was a little too far in, then you can adjust it and that's okay. All right, so that's the overall placement of my apple. And that's the overall shape. Of course, later I can go back and adjust it if I need to. The next thing I'm gonna start on is my bird. So the bird has a lot of detail. He's got eyes and a beak and feathers and a pretty tail. We're not gonna draw all of that right now. We're just gonna focus on drawing the overall shape of the bird. So remember, you're gonna start out by figuring out where everything is located on your paper. So look at the apple that you just drew on the picture. Then look at the space between the intersecting point of the apple right here to the intersecting point of the bird right here. We have all this space, right? So on my drawing, I want that same amount of space between the two objects. So I feel like around this point would be a good point to start on my bird. Uh, then we go down on this line, it goes through here. So that's about a third of the way down possibly from here out, so about there, I think. Uh, the little leg kind of curves out from there, maybe around here, 
and it does come to a lower point so maybe around that area is where that's going to be so i'm just hitting some points uh, of intersection for this little guy and then the feathers over here the wing is going to come out maybe over here i might have drawn that a little close to the edge but i can always adjust it later if i need to and the tail seems to be hitting almost the edge of the paper right here around there so that's the bottom part of my bird now the head crosses this grid line about halfway up really between here and here it's about halfway up so i'm going to put a mark maybe around there and I think that's where this intersecting point is going to be. So we're using the rule of thirds grid not only to get our focal point objects aligned, but we're also using it to figure out the placement of our actual objects. So it, it definitely is helpful if you can print out your picture and work from that. So I think I have enough points that I can now figure out the actual shape of my bird. So I'm going to go from here. Curve it down, I'm gonna connect it. Like I said, this is just a basic outer shape. If you need to make adjustments later, you're gonna have all the time you need to do that. But for now, all we need are those intersecting points. And then you're connecting that as we go. So from here, maybe I brought it a little too far in. That right there have a little cheek of the bird. And the head of the bird. And then it curves down. So I had initially had my mark over here. It's a little bit off, but that's okay. I really am drawing this darker than I should. I really should be drawing this lighter. I'm gonna bump it out a little bit more, I think but I really want you guys to be able to see this on the camera. So I'm drawing darker than I should, but you guys definitely need to draw as light as you can. I know I say that a lot, but it's, it's important. So there's the head of my bird. It seems like he's got a pointy head, so I'm gonna have to go back and fix him later. Uh, from here, we have the curve of his body. I feel like I went too far. Well, no. Around here is where the curve of his body starts, right on the grid line. So, I think I possibly did go too far out with that shape of the head. So, I'm going to backtrack a little, bring this over, and I'll check this part out later. So, from there to there, maybe? body goes that way kind of slopes down a bit Got the tail okay there we go I had already kind of marked this line and that's where I thought the tail would end up tail goes in this way and this was my mark for where my uh, my wings we're going to come up and it does kind of have to match from here to here, which I think it mostly does. Let's bring this down a bit more here. It's all about adjusting. You're not going to get it exactly right, right off the bat, but you're just trying to figure out the placement and the size and the overall shape of your objects. If the shape isn't quite right initially, don't worry, like this bird's head is already giving me a headache. <laughs> but that's okay. So now I have the head of my bird. I think the cheek of my bird might have to stick out a little bit more. There we go, bigger cheeks. Have the wing of my bird that comes down and I have marked this as where my leg should come down to and this should connect here 
All right, so now I have the overall shape of my bird. I have the overall shape of my apple. Now all I have left is my pitcher back there and my artichoke. So let's look at the space between the apple and the bird where the pitcher starts. So we have a curve right there between. So your spacing between the objects needs to be exact or close to exact. That way the negative space that you have left over can be enough to fill the rest of your objects that might be behind them. So I see a curve right there, I'll put that there. Uh, my pitcher seems to start right there where my apple kind of crosses that line. So my pitcher is going to go there, put a mark over here. It curves in to about there and then it goes above or not above but close to my grid line right here. So I have those intersecting points, I have the bottom of my pitcher. The other side of the picture seems to be coming out from right here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's coming out of here. So that's on this side. Good thing I moved my bird's head over because <laughs> I think it was a little off initially. So that's going to start out here. It's going to go this way. I think the neck of the, of the, uh, the picture might curve to here. And then it curves out to right on my grid line. So that'll be around there, and from there it'll go up. So now I have kind of the dimensions of the picture. I've marked my paper where I think my picture goes. Now it's a matter of connecting the marks and getting an accurate shape for your objects. Maybe a little less pointy right there. There we go. So I have the shape of my pitcher here. This goes that way. I think I might have drawn it a little too far off. That's okay. The initial marks that you're making are just to give you a faint idea of where things go. And then you're going to go back later and adjust it if you need to move things around. Not a problem. Over here, I said the picture is going to come out from behind the bird's body and head a little bit into this section, but mostly going this way. So I'm just going to connect from here to here. Maybe a little bit more curved. I think I drew it too diagonal initially like that I'm gonna curve that that way and then from here goes up and then slope down a bit right there notice I haven't drawn any details inside of anything all I'm doing is the overall outer shape of each of my objects. So I have the body of the picture pretty much mapped out. Now I need to do the handle. So my handle, if I look at the grid line, here's the apple. So the handle starts around here, right? So I'm gonna mark that. And then the top part does not quite start here. There's a gap, so there's a negative space here between here and there that you need to keep an eye out for. So keep an eye on your negative spaces, whatever your still life is. You wanna keep an eye on the negative spaces because they're what's gonna help you shape your objects. The negative space is just as important as a positive space. You always need to keep it in mind. So it doesn't quite touch the top of the grid, so it's gonna stay around there. So it's gonna start here, it's gonna end around here, and it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the picture. So this is the edge of my paper, so it's gonna come in to there. So those are my marks. My points, basically, on the map that I'm gonna use to figure out the shape and location 
of my object. And from here, it's going to go down that way. The negative space here needs to go up. All right, so there's my shape of my picture. Later, I'm gonna go back and add the inner uh, line there. But so far, at least I know where my picture goes, where my handle of my picture goes, the body of it goes. The last thing I need is my artichoke. So look at the picture. The artichoke is going off the top of the paper, right? So if it goes off the edge of your picture, it needs to go off the edge of your drawing too. So I'm gonna start out here. And that's the same spot basically as I see here. And it's gonna go in a real big curve this way and then this side also goes off the edge of my paper and it's going to curve out that way so that's the more or less place where my artichoke is going to go at the top i have a line that goes this way that goes down I'm just drawing the shape here, here. It makes kind of like a, like an irregular zigzaggy shape. Now I'm on this one over here. And this one comes out of there. And now I'm at the last one, that's this one, which starts really should start over here above the handle. So I might have to readjust this. I might have gone too far with it, which is fine because it's fixable. Everything is fixable. This is why you need to draw light because you are bound to make mistakes. You're making mistakes, that's okay. It just means that you're learning and you're seeing things that you were not seeing before. So if this is here, now I know for a fact that this is too far. You see how this and that don't really match? So I'm gonna erase this. I think I might have made this part too wide. That might have been the problem. And I'm gonna continue down here. So I'm drawing this part now. So almost, I ended up almost at the same spot. Okay, so there's the edge of my artichoke, on the left at least. On the right, I wanna start kind of inside the picture and just work my way from there. I think that I'm missing this interior line to kind of know where this leaf goes. So this one's gonna end here. So always, always look at your object. Now I realize that my artichoke is too high here. It's fine here, but this one, this leaf comes way lower. I drew it all the way up here because I wasn't paying attention. So if this goes here, this is gonna go all the way down here.
crosses this way, just like this does. Okay, I think that's a much better placement for it, a much better uh, shape too, it's a little bit off. Now, this is pretty much the placement of all my objects. I am not saying that this is perfect because clearly there's a lot of improvements that can be made. But this is step number one. All you have to do for step one is map out the placement of each of your objects, the size of your objects. Make sure everything matches the location from your picture to your drawing. So if something goes off the top of your paper on the photograph, it needs to go off the top of your drawing. If it almost touches the edge here, it needs to almost touch the edge over here. If one thing overlaps in front of another here, it needs to do the same over here. So everything has to match. So, so far, all that you have to do for this step one is map out the large shapes as light as possible. Mine is a little dark, I've said that repeatedly, but that's only so you guys can see it on the screen. So if I was doing this as a regular drawing, I would make it much, much lighter. So this is my end result for step one. Next video, we're gonna talk about step two and how you start filling in your details. I know you guys are anxious to do that. So be patient, we're almost there. Uh, but this is how you're gonna do your step one, which is mapping out your masses of your large objects from the picture to the drawing. Thank you guys.